Do you love hiking but can't seem to ditch those summer vibes? Then this is the video for you. Hey there hikers, Adam here. Now when the words Cape Cod are uttered, they usually evoke thoughts of beaches and swimming and endless seafood. Nevertheless, there are some surprisingly great hiking trails to be found on the Cape as well. So today we're exploring the top 15 best hiking trails on Cape Cod, Massachusetts. The rankings will be a combination of the quality of the hikes themselves, as well as the various points of interest that we will encounter along the way. And for obvious reasons, the ocean tides will be a factor on some of the hikes on this list. And so on those hikes where such warnings and different tide guidance is warranted, I will provide that as necessarily. Let's go. We are starting off at number 15 with the Nauset Marsh Trail. Located near Easton, Massachusetts, the Nauset Marsh Trail is primarily a marsh and pond hiking trail. The Nauset Marsh Trail is a 2.7 mile loop trail that has a difficulty designation of a walk in the woods. This first trail is just a nice, pleasant, easy going hike. It's flat basically the entire time as you make your way around the salt pond taking a look at the different marshes that you find along the way and different boaters and other activity happening in the pond. There is even a boat rental. So if you want to extend your stay, rent a boat, check out the actual salt pond as well as hike around it, that is totally doable. And then there's a couple other viewpoints as you make your way back through the woods back to where you started. But the fact that this trail is just so easy and so flat and honestly more of a walk than an actual hike is what brings it all the way down to being at the bottom of the list. At number 14 is the Sandy Neck Nature Trail. Located near Barnstable, Massachusetts, the Sandy Neck Nature Trail is primarily a marsh and beach hiking trail. The Sandy Neck Nature Trail is an 11 mile loop trail that has a difficulty designation of a road less traveled. I'm just gonna come out and say it. This trail is grueling. It is the longest trail that occurs on this hiking list. It may be one of the longest trails on all of Cape Cod, almost 11 and a half miles. It has great, nice beach views and marsh views, but oh my, 11 and a half miles walking on sand. I don't care who you are, it freaking sucks. I was just so over it by the end, having to empty my shoes as many times as I did. It's just so much more difficult to walk on sand that gives way on every single step than it is to just walk on nice, flat, open ground. And you know, the views honestly got a little repetitive after a while. You don't have to go nearly the 11 and a half miles that I did. There's a couple cutoff trails. So you can take one of those and get kind of the basically the same exact experience that I did going a little bit of a shorter hike. Though maybe they should give a nice little medal for us true completionists that made it across all 11 and a half miles. At number 13 is the head of the Meadow Loop. Located near Truro, Massachusetts, the Head of the Meadow Loop is primarily a forest and sand dunes hiking trail. The Head of the Meadow Loop is a four mile loop trail that has a difficulty designation of off the beaten path. Ah, and we've come to our first instance of a scrub pine forest on the list. I honestly find them so much fun to walk through. They're so weird how they are twisty and turvy and kind of makes you feel like hiking through it was a Dr. Seuss kind of forest. Uh, it's very interesting, very unlike a lot of the forests that I hike through on my normal mountains. That's what really, you know, elevated to this spot for me on the list. But at the end of the day, this trail, there are not that many views. You're mostly spending your time in the forest the whole time. Though as you make it back on the back side of the trail, you do get the option to choose if you want to hike along the dune return path or the beach return path. Um, those have two different difficulty levels. Obviously, the beach return path is uh, much easier compared to if you're going to climb across the dunes. Of note, you do have to make several different road crossings on this trail as you make your way through it. At number 12 is the Goose Pond Trail. Located near Wellfleet, Massachusetts, the Goose Pond Trail is primarily a marsh hiking trail. The Goose Pond Trail is a 2.2 mile out and back trail that has a difficulty designation of a walk in the woods. Now this is a fun little trail located in the Wellfleet Bay Wildlife Sanctuary. I'd recommend checking it out at high tide so you can fully see all the water in the different marshes. Though at low tide you will get to see all the fun little crabs that live near the boardwalk. So, you know, 
Take it how you want, I'd recommend high tide, but there is still some interesting things to see at low tide. The trail is rather easy, you see some nice Cape Cod houses and extensive views along the marsh. There are other trails within the wildlife sanctuary that you can check out while you're here, including the Bayview Trail and the Silver Spring Trail, but the best views on the trail are found on the Goose Pond Trail as you make your way along the boardwalk out to the end of the tip. At number 11 is the Morris Island Loop. Located near Chatham, Massachusetts in the Monomoy National Wildlife Refuge, the Morris Island Loop is primarily a beach hiking trail. The Morris Island Loop is a three mile loop trail that has a difficulty designation of a walk in the woods. And we have ourselves another beach walk, this one in the Monomoy National Wildlife Refuge. Very visually similar to the Sandy Neck Nature Trail that I've already covered on the list, this one though does stand out if you are a bird watcher. There are a lot of birds that can be found in the wildlife refuge in the different marsh areas. Now of note, you will have to hike this trail at low tide because several of the different beachy areas that you walk along are not actually above water when it is high tide. So it is not possible to necessarily do this trail at high tide. So definitely come check it out at low tide. Additionally, the parking is in the wildlife refuge parking lot, but there is currently no connection from that area to the actual hiking trail. There's a lot of erosion issues, so there is an access road, so you have to walk along the road through the neighborhood or you can make it to the actual trail. But from there, it's just like any of these other hiking trails as you make your way along the sand spit. At number 10 is the Race Point Light. Located near Provincetown, Massachusetts, the Race Point Light Trail is primarily a beach hiking trail. The Race Point Light Trail is a four mile out and back trail that has a difficulty designation of a walk in the woods. Our first lighthouse hike of the list. This one's a very straightforward, very flat, easy going hike as majority of the trail is along this basically kind of flat access road path that goes above the marsh. You'll get two different marshes on either side. It's interesting because you're near the Provincetown Airport, there'll be a lot of little planes that fly overhead. Of note though, when you get near the end of the path, getting close to the dunes, you might have to do this one at low tide because you might run into a little bit of a water crossing and that can be variable depending on how high the tide is, but not that big a deal. Once you make it on the other side of the dunes, you're basically right at the lighthouse. And that is clearly the point of interest of this hike. Now this is an active lighthouse. There is a lighthouse keeper that stays in the little house next to the lighthouse. So it's interesting to see that when you go, you can't get that close to it. They do have that area roped off, but you could see some activity there. Like I did the day that I went. And of course you get to have access to the beach as well. At number nine is the cliff pond trail. Located near Brewster, Massachusetts in Nickerson State Park, the Cliff Pond Trail is primarily a forest and pond hiking trail. The Cliff Pond Trail is a three mile loop trail that has a difficulty designation of a walk in the woods. So the basic gist of this trail is it's a trail that completely circumnavigates Cliff Pond. You never get that far away from the pond shoreline. So you basically are going near different beaches all along the pond. So you can go swimming if you want to. There was tons of people swimming the day that I went. You could swim on the front side of the pond, the back side. There was a nice boulder that acted as a point of interest along the way that you could climb on top of if you so chose. There was lots of different people boating along the pond. So there are different activities you can do with the pond besides just hiking your way around it. But it was cool going through the different forests and seeing all the various sides of the pond. So it's all those viewpoints and quick, easy access to the pond that as soon as you get hot, you can feel free to jump right in and cool off. That brings this one all the way up to where it is on the list. At number eight is the Dead Neck Trail. Located near Mashpee, Massachusetts, the Dead Neck Trail is primarily a beach and dike hiking trail. The Dead Neck Trail is a three mile out and back trail that has a difficulty designation of off the beaten path. 
Now I can already hear what you're saying, but Adam, this one seems so similar to some of the ones you've already hiked on this list. Why is this one ranked so much higher? I agree, Dead Neck is very similar to the Sandy Neck Nature Trail and the Morris Island Loop in the kind of hike that it is, basically a beach hike that goes out around a neck of land. But this one I found more interesting because A, it wasn't as long, it wasn't as annoying to hike on through the sand, and as you get near the end of the neck, you get to go out along the dike and hop across the rocks and there's lots of boats going in and out of the channel for you to see and it might not have been as easy to see in my footage but basically as you're hiking along the beach you're very close to Martha's Vineyard and so you get nice views of Martha's Vineyard on the horizon the whole time you're hiking it so I found it quite enjoyable I would definitely check this one out again it wasn't nearly as annoying as the sandy neck one was it was much shorter and had a lot more viewpoints along the way how can you complain with that definitely come check it out man can you believe more than halfway done now and it's only going to get more inspirational from here on out. But if you are already inspired to go check out a bunch of these trails, I have of course created custom all trails maps that I have linked in the description down below. And hey, if you're enjoying the video while you're down there, be sure to hit that like button. It really helps me out. Let's get back to the video. At number seven is the Red Maple Swamp and Fort Hill Loop. Located near Easton, Massachusetts, the Red Maple Swamp and Fort Hill Loop is primarily a swamp boardwalk and hills hiking trail. The Red Maple Swamp and Fort Hill Loop is a two-mile loop trail that has a difficulty designation of a walk in the woods. This trail is just so cool. It is chock full with so many different landmarks, viewpoints, and points of interest that it just keeps you interested the whole way. First, you have the Red Maple Swamp Boardwalk, a fun little boardwalk the first one we've encountered so far on the hiking list. It is not the most scenic because the swamp is very dense around the boardwalk, so you can't see that far into it, but it is fun to weave your way through the swamp. Once you're done with the boardwalk of the swamp, you burst out onto a little farm near the edge of Cape Cod, and you find this old house from the 1800s that is just painted the brightest of colors. It's very interesting to check out. I had no idea that this was going to happen. There's fun little stuff you can read about it if it's during the right time of year you might be able to go inside the house it is maintained by the cape cod national seashore and then of course there's fort hill which gives nice views of the marshes of the surrounding area it's a nice fun spot to check out during sunset that is when i went to check it out and get different views around the marshes along the way at number six is the pamet cranberry bog trail Located near Truro, Massachusetts, the Pamet Cranberry Bog Trail is primarily a forest and sand dunes hiking trail. The Pamet Cranberry Bog Trail is a three mile out and back trail that has a difficulty designation of off the beaten path. Now this trail took me completely by surprise. I freaking loved it. It was so surprising, had so many interesting things along the way. I thought it would be a hike through a cranberry bog and that was the least interesting thing about this trail. You couldn't even really see the cranberry bog though you could see the old cranberry bog house that was cool to check out but what made this one the most interesting was that there was fun dune viewpoints along the way that i wasn't expecting it's another great spot for sunset so definitely come near the later part of the day to see it at sunset you're so high up on those cliffs and then you can also then hike down the hill and get that beach access the waves here are very large because you're on the outer cape so it's fun to see those up close and personal you might even see some seals while you're over over here as well and then you make your way back and then there's bearberry hill for you to relax on top of and see some of the very large cape cod houses that are typical for this area of the cape at number five is the atlantic white cedar swamp trail Located near Wellfleet, Massachusetts, the Atlantic White Cedar Swamp Trail is primarily a swamp boardwalk hiking trail. The Atlantic White Cedar Swamp Trail is a 1.5 mile out and back trail that has a difficulty designation of a walk in the woods. Here it is, one of the most famous trails on all of Cape Cod, and let me tell you, does it live up to the expectations? I found hiking this boardwalk so mysterious and, and interesting. It was very enjoyable in that you could really see off into the distance in the swamp through the different cedar trees. I went during the morning, which was kind of fun. When it is a little brighter out, it takes away a little bit of that you know, scenic aura, but it, 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 it's just a nice, different kind of trail that you 
you wouldn't necessarily expect to find on Cape Cod with all its beaches. Yes, of course, this is a swamp, so don't forget that bug spray. It can get quite a bit buggy. Watch out for that. But this one's so cool to check out. Definitely come take a look at the Atlantic Cedar Swamp Trail. At number four is The Knob. Located in the Woods Hole region of Falmouth, Massachusetts, the Knob is primarily a viewpoint hiking trail. The Knob is a one mile out and back trail that has a difficulty designation of a walk in the woods. The views on this hike are just absolutely stunning. It is the ideal spot for sunset. Both sides, both sides of the knob. On the back side of the beach, you get a great view of the harbor and the different houses as the sun shines on them. Oh, when you get to that, the knob section of the knob, and it is coming down for sunset. It is absolutely spectacular. It's like 11 out of 10 view. Everyone goes there, so make sure you get there a little bit early. It's a well-known spot for sunset, so if you get there a little bit early, you'll be able to get some of the best spots, but it is not that long of a hike. Very pleasant to take in those different boats and then chill and settle in as the sun just goes down, giving you that 11 out of 10 view, bringing it all the way near the top of the list at number four. At number three is the Dune Shacks Trail. Located near Provincetown, Massachusetts, the Dune Shacks Trail is primarily a sand dunes hiking trail. The Dune Shacks Trail is a 2.5 mile loop trail that has a difficulty designation of a road less traveled. I just thought this trail was so freaking cool. The dunes were huge, so much bigger than I expected. I had no idea that Cape Cod had such large sand dunes. And they really hit you right from the start. You hike up to basically the tallest one right at the beginning of the trail. And ugh, it feels like a huge hill, but it is so much harder because you have to trudge through that sand and then it just splayed out right in front of you. As far as you can see, more and more sand dunes. And because of that, you really got to prepare for this one. It is quite hot when the sun is out on those sands it's almost like hiking through the actual desert until you get to the beach but it is so peaceful walking out there i really was blown away and had no idea that this was something i could expect on cape cod and oh yeah don't forget there are also the actual dune shacks that give this trail its name you get to check out those no one was there when i was there i don't really know if anyone lives there or what they're there for but it is quite interesting they seem very quaint and that is what helps bring this one all the way up to its spot at number three. At number two is the Long Point Light Loop. Located near Provincetown, Massachusetts, the Long Point Light Loop is primarily a dike and beach hiking trail. The Long Point Light Loop is a 5.7 mile loop trail that has a difficulty designation of off the beaten path. All right, this is your official tide warning. This is the only one that I really need to stress. You need to take the tides into account before you hike the trail. That dike out to Long Point is only passable at lowering or low tide. You need to budget yourself enough tide to get all the way out there, do all the hiking you wanna do, and then get back before the tide comes in because the tide will basically go over the top of the dike and you will be stranded unless you have another way off of the island. So definitely pay attention to that you don't want to be stranded you don't want to get into trouble please do it at low tide that being said it is such an amazing hike hiking for over a mile along the dike and then you make it and you get two lighthouses for the price of one both the wood and light and of course the long point light that gives this trail its name lots of fun beach walking interesting to go look at the different lighthouses and you get a perfect view of Provincetown on the inner side of long point it's just so freaking cool really elevating and bringing up all the way to its spot here at number two. Now, before we make it all the way to number one, let's take a look at a few honorable mentions that just didn't quite make the cut. First, we'd have the 3.5 mile Lowell Holly Reservation located in Mashpee, Massachusetts and run by the Trustees Foundation. Then there's the two mile trail through the meadows of the Long Pasture Wildlife Sanctuary located in Barnstable, Massachusetts. This one would be most interesting during the peak blooming of the various wildflowers, but be significantly less appealing during the whole rest of the year. 
Next is the five mile trail through the Beeb Woods located in Falmouth, Massachusetts, whose appeal is the main mansion, art installations, and other various features along the way. And our last honorable mention would be the Bass Hope Boardwalk, a short and sweet 0.5 mile out and back trail located in Yarmouth, Massachusetts. And that means that the best hike on all of Cape Cod, Massachusetts is the Great Island Trail. Located near Wellfleet, Massachusetts, the Great Island Trail is primarily a beach, sand dunes, and forest hiking trail. The Great Island Trail is a 9.5 mile loop trail that has a difficulty designation of off the beaten path. Now I really kept wondering if I was going to find a trail that would displace this one. I had already had very high opinion of the Great Island Trail and it was just reinforced. It really has a little bit of everything. Beach walking, sand spit, forest, sand dunes, cliff views, a little bit of everything all in one trail, not too long. And it is just the best one. Has great view of Cape Cod, Wellfleet, all the surrounding areas. I won't belabor it anymore. You can check out my longer video that I have made on the topic that I have linked up above. And it just really gives you a little bit of everything. And I bet it's even a great spot for sunset if you want to check it out at sunset. Truly never a dull moment on this trail. There is so much variety, so much good scenery. That is what really brings it all the way up to its spot here at number one. And that's that. I hope you enjoyed the video. I got nothing else for you. Now go get hiking.